Good morning. It's a day six of the build. I'm Brian from I Want Tesla. And again, just to recap, I'm building a off-road or overlanding Tesla Model Y, first of its kind. Go back and click the videos. This will be all in a big playlist if you want to watch all of them, but this is day six of the build. And I've made some really, really good progress. So yesterday I bolted down the roof rack and I I got to do some modifications, of course, and I also made a panel to go on the side out of cardboard just to test fit. And you know what? Let me show you what that looks like. Now, keep in mind, this is just for a template or just get an idea of what it looks like. I'm going to make this a little smaller here. Uh, this will sit flush that will angle in and it will be kind of it will kind of bend in a little bit so it will be narrower because the car does get narrower in the back. Well, let me turn these lights on. So it will be in a little bit. I'm going to make this smaller than what it is. Uh, it's going to be flush with the top here. I was thinking about doing something like a half inch reveal above it, but I'm going to make it flush. Uh, now this, I'm going to have cut probably this line. I'm going to follow the line of the car all the way down. And I'm going to do something in the back here. I haven't figured it out yet, but this is going to be a great spot to put sponsors. Uh, Toyo is one of the sponsors of this build into the Toyo tire. So I'll have them up here. This will be, um, this will be black vinyl, shiny black vinyl with white lettering probably. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to make this a little narrower here. This half inch reveal, I don't really like. So I'm going to cut it flush with this and then use this bolt as well to give more support to this because driving 70 miles an hour, uh, cause I'm not going to go super fast with this, but driving 70 miles an hour with this, uh, the sail here, it could, uh, wiggle a little bit. Although I am going to have two support pieces in the middle. It will make it nice and secure. And this is going to be hopefully a piece of aluminum, some uh, maybe eighth inch thick aluminum or three sixteenths or something like that. I want something sturdy here. So I don't know what I'm going to use exactly. I'm going to try to find some local places around here in Mooresville. I've got to grind the bolts down a little bit, set this down in place, kind of get everything together. And that's what we're going to work on today. And hopefully by the end of the day, have the side pieces figured out, but also be working on the wiring. I gotta bring all the wiring into one side and into the car somehow. My plan is to bring all the wires in through this channel here, down into this cavity here, and then possibly into this grommet to bring inside the car, or I may bring it all the way down to the tail light here. I kind of don't want to bring it into the tail light, but I'd like to probably come in through here, bring it down into the controller, into the really trick controller that I have that is going to pr uh, program all the lights and the compressor that I have for the car, because you definitely need a compressor because when you go off road, you want to air down the tires and it gives a more softer ride, but it also gives a better footprint over rocks and things like that. So we definitely will be airing down the tires and we also need to pump them back up. I got a pretty, heavy duty compressor from ARB, really awesome. This will definitely, definitely pump up the tires. And I think I'm gonna work out something trick where uh, it'll pump all four tires up at once. And the computer does it to exactly whatever pressure you want. So, and, and air down the tires too. So I could just hit a button and it'll air it down to like 15 or 17 pounds of pressure. And that's perfect for off-road. And then uh, when I'm done with the trail, I can pump them back up to 30, whatever, whatever I put them at uh, for the highway. That is the plan today. That was a very long intro to this vlog. Day number six, and that's the plan. But you know how plans change. So check out also what I did. I put the zero emissions license plate bracket, or I put the zero emissions plate on with the license plate bracket from Tony Pham. I think that's gonna be cool when I go off-roading. When I go to, I found some trails up north of here by Hickory. And when I go there to have this zero emissions plate on the front is gonna be great because there's gonna be all these Jeeps going off-roading and all these uh, Toyotas. And this is perfect. It's green, first of all, not just the color, but it's a, an electric vehicle going off-road, putting no emissions out into the environment. So I think this is gonna be the perfect off-roading vehicle.
So yes, I know this looks a little chunky right here, but remember there's gonna be a plate here, so you won't see this. I'm gonna grind that off. This sits really well on here now. Uh, it's kind of indented there where, uh, and there's gonna be a lock washer here. So it's gonna, this isn't gonna back out while we're driving. So I, I probably will put some Loctite on there as well, just to, for an added security. Uh, you see right here, this isn't touching, so I can loosen these up and slide these back and forth to put accessories on here as needed. Need to grind that smooth. Actually, I need to put this down a little bit. Uh, I need to put that down a little bit so the washer fits, and I think I have to do that on these this side too. Yeah, these are a little high, so I'll, I'll grind those down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off and Loctite, put Loctite on the screws and really cinch down everything uh, that is not gonna be able to move. Like this, I'm not gonna do, um, well, I'll, I'll Loctite these, but not probably not those, just so I can move those in the future. And it's a removable Loctite, it's not permanent. All right, little update here. I've been playing with some spaghetti and uh, running some wires for the lights. I, brought, I, I hooked this back up here. Everything's flush, it looks really nice now. It's very, very secure. I shake the whole car by doing this. So this is on very, very good. Now it's just a matter of bringing all the wires into one section. This is gonna have a wire by itself, a positive and a negative, and then the rest of the lights are going to have their own positive. Well, these two lights are gonna have their own positive. This one's gonna have its own positive. And then, but all the negatives are gonna terminate into one for these three, and then this is gonna have its own because I have this six-way adapter. So I'm gonna run six cables into here. So because the negative is really a ground and that's all you really need. So, and then I'm gonna feed them through here. The way I only have four wires going into the car. So there's less of bunching up wires here and then there's less going through here. Maybe later on I will do something else up here, but for right now, I'm not planning that for this route. But yes, there's gonna be a mess of wires here. You're not gonna really see them because remember this plate's gonna be here, which I haven't done yet, but I'm working on the lights here. I am testing them with a nine volt battery, <laughs> which is really funny. Let me show you. I have these two linked together and then I just have the positive and negative here. I'm just gonna grab onto the nine volt battery. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to adjust these up a little bit, but again, just a nine volt battery. Front light uses quite a bit more power. So nine volt battery is gonna do nothing for this. It's barely gonna light up um, any, of the, any of the LEDs, but you can see how uh, this is going to light up and it looks really cool. I can't wait to see all of them lit up and the 12 volt battery in the car, once I hook everything up through the 12 volt battery, uh, this is gonna be cool. <laughs> Five wires. I mean, obviously it'll be cleaned up a little bit better than that. That goes right into here. And I'll, have a, I'll have all this in a wiring loom, but that feeds right into this. And then there's, a, there's another connection here that will attach. And so if I wanted to remove this, I could just unplug it and take this whole thing off. So this fits inside the car. The rest of it will go inside, and I think, I think I'm gonna put the controller in here. You know what, let me grab the controller and let me show talk a little bit about it. ARB sent out this whole compressor system. This is the compressor, but they also sent out this Lynx system. This is pretty high tech. Since this is a obviously a high tech car, they sent this thing out for me to connect all the lights to it. I'm gonna go into more detail about this. This is where everything hooks up to. You run power from the car, you have USB power for the device itself, and then everything is controlled on a phone, or really not a phone, this is just a little tablet that you have all these menus. So I run all the wires to here, as far as all the lights up here, all those, all those wires will go to here. There's a whole compressor kit that hooks to here. And then from this device, I can turn on this. I can, I can run this cable over to my tire, the air valve. And on here I can push, I want to lower the pressure to 17, 17 PSI and hit activate. It'll lower the tire pressure to that tire to 17 pounds. And then if I want to reinflate when I'm done, I just hit the button and it would go back to whatever I set it to, 34, 35, 40, whatever I want to. Obviously there is a lot, <laughs> there is a lot to this. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a separate video on 
hooking this up because this is this I, I am going to do a separate video on this this is kind of crazy uh, so i need to figure out a good spot to put this and you want these two close to each other as close as possible because you don't want to delay you don't want anything like that so i'm thinking about putting this under one of the seats maybe the driver's seat because everything is on this side or see if there's room underneath the seats here i thought about right here underneath the front or the the rear deck lid uh but now seeing how small how short this cable is i think i'm going to move it closer to uh, up front because this is going to be up front this device can control a bunch of things so if you hook a trailer to this uh, you can have uh, and you have tire pressure monitoring system back there on the trailer they sell that as well you can monitor your tire pressure back there another thing with this say i have these reverse lights here or even the the big the big 50 inch light some of these wires go to the existing wires for the headlights so i can program it to when i turn the brights on that the big light comes on or when the reverse light comes on maybe these back ones pop on i'm probably not going to do that because uh, i'm really only going to use those off-road so i want to individually do those or i'm going to program it so they all come on or individually come on and then of course for the compressor system this little compressor may look little but this sucker is heavy it's well made it's almost like the compressor i have for my shop it's very quiet and very very powerful and then you can also they also have these things where you can fill a tank up and you can use uh, pneumatic tools with this as well so this is going to come in handy if we're not, i'm off road and also with some friends i can air up those tires as well using this device and the battery so this is going to be quiet because the car is going to be quiet because it's a tesla and that's why we love it so i have to do some research on this and that's probably what i'll do for the rest of the night that's a really trick trick thing and i want to thank arb for sending this out and i'm going to put it to good use and we're going to once i understand it we're going to try to figure out some really cool things to do with it because there's a lot of pins here so we can customize a ton on here what if i did this let me know if you think this would be a good idea what if i put some leds in the channel underneath the roof rack so when i light that up it lights up inside the car so if i'm in here at nighttime, if maybe i camp in here uh, i can have some lights instead of using the dome lights on the inside i can have the leds on the outside that might be kind of trick maybe use rgb so i have different colors might be something there so let me know if you like that idea I'll, I'll look into that i have an extra pin left on the um, left on the wiring harness coming into the car so i can easily do that run power to those and i can tie into the ground on the rest that's a possibility for sure i think that's about it for these vlogs as far as the build you saw the car it's almost done i'm just going to tidy up a couple things get it ready to go um, fil filming this actually does take some time i have to set up some shots and that's why you haven't seen a whole lot because i'm i'm kind of in a time crunch to get everything done i want to get this out there and uh, filming like this kind of video does take up a little bit of time so i'm gonna this is the last vlog for this let me know if you like these vlogs because i can do something like this later on in the future what i'm doing this for is a lot like the racetrack i got a lot of people to go to the racetrack i'd like a lot of people to do this in north carolina here if you want to do this maybe we can start a club together of uh, the tesla off-roading club uh, and we can do some travels and have a great time out there and we, we get to a destination because overlanding again is about the destination it's it's about the trip to the destination it's not about overcoming obstacles and damaging your vehicle or anything it's really the journey there and enjoying friends and family and uh, just having a great time and with that being said as always stay awesome stay positive and i'll catch you on the next one i'll see you i'll see you out in the woods maybe we're in the dirt in the mud who knows i'll see you